So I got asked to look at this thing and it's a wireless charger for a car. It's USB-C powered. Now I have tried plugging this into a USB-C power supply just to see what happens and shorted the supply out or overloaded it or something. It's, it's didn't like it at all. So we're going to pull it apart and see if we can find anything obviously wrong. So I'm pretty sure we have to go through the front of it. So let's see if we can get underneath this glass here. Oh, that's actually going really easily. Well, that's easy. That's surprisingly easy. Okay. So that's what's inside. You've got a coil. Yeah, it's got this illuminated badge thing, I think. So that's purely a light. <laughs> it's a display of some kind. LED thing. Okay, so screws here. Let's get these screws out. One screw is already missing. Maybe the guy who had already been in it. Maybe that's why it's so easy to get apart. Now, there's a couple of screws down there. Let's take those out as well. They're just holding the bottom bit on, but it might do more than that. Okay, everything's exploding everywhere, so that's perfect. It's like using the same screws everywhere, which is great. I like that. Good manufacturing principle. Which is bomb cost, another screw missing there. So we've got my cable there for the motor, so I'll plug that. And we've got this pad at the top. soldered onto that pad which is stuck down it's adhesive. Well there's the board. There's quite a lot going on in here. It's quite surprising. Like I said when I plugged the power in it basically had a short now I'm seeing something just here. Let's zoom in a bit further. Yeah there's digital zoom get right in there. Is that just dirt? Or is that a blow mark? Go on the other side. Got those capacitors there. That's always a prime suspect, capacitors. Visually look fine though. Well let's check for the shorts. Now I did notice it's got a power supply going out to this which is a magnet that is magnetic so I think that might be an electromagnet as well or maybe it's some kind of other alternative connection oh you can't see it very on camera right now but I suppose there's a short across there measuring one ohm one ohm hmm okay now we've got this other coil up here which obviously that will be a short because it's a coil 0.3 you know you kind of expect a low resistance there because it is not resistive, it's going to be inductive. I can check for that. In fact, I think I will. So I've got my Shannon tweezer here. This can measure inductance. It's not a convenient way of doing this particular one. Let's get them on there. There we go. Measuring inductance, that's fine. So that's not shorted, at least not obviously. This has got marking of ground and 9 volts. So if that is 1 ohm across 9 volts, that's an awful lot of current. I'm thinking I might disconnect this and see if anything changes. Right, I've taken that wire off. Let's see what we get now. Still getting one ohm. Which means it isn't this which is the problem, it's this side. Okay, let's do some other checks. Let's do diode checks across these capacitors here. These capacitors look like they're all in parallel. Okay, that's not a short across those big caps. So that's those ones ruled out. A little cap there. Not shorted. Not shorted. 
The only thing hard short, the first thing I'll do is check for capacitors because often it is a capacitor which has gone wrong. Here we go, there's a short across that one. And that one. So what we've got here is two MOSFETs. So these are two MOSFETs and you've got these capacitors here. Both those capacitors there measuring short. So exactly which part is wrong? Don't know yet. Could be the caps, could be the MOSFETs. I'm just trying to closely look at those capacitors right now. So if I can see any visual indications. I can't see anything. Usually when I fail we can see like a crack or a line or something on them. Not always, or maybe discoloration where it gets got hot. But in this case, nothing. So there's a short on that line, just don't know which side it is. Now if you remember when I first opened this up there was like a mark on this, like dirt or something. Now it could still be that that might be a little hole just there. So you can see it, I'm zoomed in. See that little mark? There was a little scuff of dirt across that. So I'm thinking that actually might be a blowhole on that MOSFET. So now I've taken these wires off to go to the coil, well, that takes that coil out of circuit, so it should make it a bit easier to troubleshoot. Now if I go between the ground, that's zero volts. So we know we're getting a short to five volt side, whatever it is. Let's check this side of the MOSFET. Nothing that's showing 0.4 diode drop that looks fine. Do this side, nothing there with that wire. Do this MOSFET, we got a short, dead short. I think this MOSFET here is blown. Let's take it off. Alright so it's going to be getting noisy because I've got my extractor fan running and I've got uh, the hot air station which is going to be used to get this thing off. I'm going to try to do this without any flux first. We'll see how we go. Clean the pads up a bit. Right, do we still have a short? Let's find out. No more short. And the short is gone, as the saying goes. Here you go. And the short is gone. So, yep, the MOSFET is what was blown on that one. Let's see if I've got a MOSFET I can put on there. I probably have something. Now, what is this original one? Let's find out what this is. There's the original MOSFET. So it's 4606A or SN6X7A. I'm not sure which one it actually is. Anyway, I'm going to get a MOSFET and drop it in there and see if it fixes it. So, apparently, this is a dual MOSFET. It's a N and P channel in the same package. So I can do a push-pull within the same device. I haven't come across those before. So I need to go and get some of these. Um, they are available, but I don't have any on hand. I've only got plain types. So these ones being a little bit different, I need to be careful about. I'm pretty confident that if I replace this device, it will work. Yeah, so it seems to be that just that one MOSFET is blown from what I can see. So I just need to replace that. I have to get some in. So I can't continue with this until I get those parts. Well, the next clip in the video will be after they arrive. One eternity later. Well, some parts have arrived, so I can carry on with this project now. It's been sitting here for about a month or so, I think. Just trying to get some time to get back to it. Where is the piece I'm looking for? This. I'm looking for this piece. Right. So, I refresh memory. It's actually these parts I needed. The 4606. A4606. So, I've already done all this before and cleaned it all up. And it's basically ready to go. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of flux on there, get the hot air station going, get one of these chips, put it on there. Let's start with some flux. Magnifies, so I can see what I'm doing. Get in that way. And let's get the hot air going. And hopefully it doesn't blow away. Here off.
My fitness chip's got big legs. Wasn't sitting down nicely, you know. What I do is I use a soldering iron instead, just to do that final bit of clean up on these pins. This pin here, that last one there, pin four was bent. So I didn't want to sit straight. Anyway, it's on. Now the challenge is going to be, can I remember how to put this thing back together? Because it's a while ago. We've got a few bits in here. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, uh, yeah, okay. I need to remember how to put this thing back together. This thing sort of sits in there like that. And this board sits under there, like that. Okay, and then we've got the coil in this part, which has to be soldered back onto the board. Okay, I'm going to figure this out, then I'm going to come back, because I don't remember. Well, I've got it this far. <laughs> I think I'm close to actually being ready to actually try it, so that goes in there. Now, these are adjustable um, pieces that actually roll out, they clamp onto the side of the phone. So I need to make sure it's in the right place, I wasn't going to have all kinds of problems. So let's get the USB-C cable, and this will be the moment of truth. We'll plug it in, and we'll see what happens. Does it go bang? Does anything happen? Does it short out my power supply, which is what I did before? Hey, it's alive. Blue light. It's going in and out, in and out, in and out. I'm not quite sure which way it's supposed to be in, which way it's supposed to be out. Okay. I think that's it. Okay. That's working. Right, um, I'm going to finish putting this back together, hopefully. And I'll just fold that piece over, that will sit in here, like that, that cable will go down there. That I think will clip together once I get it lined up alright. That might be an upside, upside down actually this piece. Might be an up, don't worry. I've got the right tweezers here. Yeah, I think if I go that way up, I can get it back in. Fingers a bit slippery from touching the gears. Come on, corporate. Here we go. Not sure that's right. It feels like it's squashing. All right, stick the screws in before I lose them. One screw here, opposite corner, hopefully. Okay. Well, it looks like it's fixed at least, because before it was just completely dead and shorting out. The question is, does it actually charge? I don't know. We'll find out in a minute. We'll get the screws back in it and fully reassemble it. Now, it did actually have a screw missing when I first got it. For whatever reason, there was one missing. Anyway. So it was just that MOSFET which was the issue. I mean, I know it's shorted anyway, we knew that much, but you weren't too sure about exactly why. There's that bit in place. And let's get this cover, which is still hopefully sticky, and drop it back in. What I'll do is I'll plug this bag in. 
Like that, here we go. Nice. Excellent. Let's go and get my phone. Open it up. I'm not sure I like the whole way it automatically shuts itself all the time, but seems to be the way it's set up. Well, it's. Unfortunately, this phone's already fully charged. This phone is not quite the same as normal because it's got this massive case on it. It did bong, so it's charging. But unfortunately, yeah, it says it's charging, so it is actually working. Charge symbols on there. Excellent. So this phone's a bit big for it, but the wireless charging is working. Brilliant. So I'd call that a success then. But basically what I expect it to be. Fixed it. Excellent. It's a shame my phone doesn't fit. Well, not very well anyway. So I found it interesting. There's other videos to watch down below. Other things I fixed. Subscribe link right there. Patreon support link over there. Catch you later.